Hello YouTube folks. Uh, I have uh, just about gotten my fill of the gang stalking material because if uh, I found if you're not careful you'll end up concentrating more on the people harassing you than actually life itself which is something that I don't want to do. I think that might be part of what they want you to do but life goes on as my ex-wife used to say is now deceased. Um, so the issue that I'd really like to focus on at this point, and am going to focus on, devote more time to, is the issue that's closest to my heart, which is the 2010 San Bruno, California natural gas explosion uh, caused by PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric Company which just happened to be right under the house of a California Public Utilities Commission ratepayer advocate, a regulator of the utility PG&E, and a board member of the uh, Ratepayers Association National Committee on Natural Gas, uh, natural gas Pipelines. Her name was Jacqueline Grieg and she was 44. She worked right here in San Francisco at the CPUC. Well, the natural gas explosion happened right under her house and it was one of the most massive, if not the mass, most massive natural gas explosions in California. It just seems too coincidental to me that this woman who is highly respected by her colleagues and by community activists uh, for advocating for the California taxpayer, the ratepayers of PG&E, customers. It just seems too coincidental that a natural gas explosion would happen right under her house, blowing her to smithereens, as well as her 13-year-old daughter. And uh, eight people died in addition to that. So, um, I heard about the story on the news, I read about it in SF Gate, and it's always just stayed in the back of my mind. I wanted to look further into it, but of course life gets in the way, and uh, when you're trying to eat and take care of yourself and losing things yourself, you know, even though it's on your mind, you don't really have all the time to devote to it or to give it the proper attention it deserves. But now that uh, I've lost my truck, uh, you know, and I'm basically just subsisting, and I have a chance to get really pissed off at about the issues that really just get under my skin. And I went online and looked up uh, on SF Gate the story once again, and I found a picture. I had to search for it, but I found a picture of Jack Jacqueline Grieg, and it was a picture, a family photo of her and her daughter. And when I saw her daughter smiling brightly at the camera, 13 years old, cute as could be with a little cross on her neck and in braces next to her mother, I just got infuriated. I stood up, I think, in my chair and said, how dare they do this to this little kid? So I said, I've, I've got to do something about this. I was already pissed off about the gang stalkers messing with me, right? But then when I saw this, and I said, you know, these are two sides of the same coin. This is governmental collusion with utilities and corporations to screw over the little guy. And Miss Grieg was an advocate for California uh, utility customers and she actually, I think, regulated, um, negotiated the prices between, or put a cap on the price between what the state would pay PG&E for its utility costs. So she was so well respected amongst her colleagues and uh, activists in the community that she worked with that uh, it just seemed to me that she was a thorn in the side of PG&E. Now, most of the people that go to the CPUC, the California Public Utilities Commissions, are most of the board members that are appointed by the governor 
and they are usually former PG&E executives, you know, and that always smacks of corruption, governmental cronyism to me. You know, you see the same thing in politics. Well, this is actually, on a statewide level, another branch of politics. So here you've got these executives who immediately go over into the regulatory agency and they have all the connections with PG&E, you know, so they kind of softball PG&E on all the regulations. And there's been numerous scandals at the California Public Utilities Commission about the corruption of some of the appointed board members and come to find out they're former PG&E executives or they're getting kickbacks or payoffs or what have you. I mean, it's totally scandalous, okay? But this woman who worked there seemed to have integrity. I could not find anything bad that was said about her. So, after I found all of that out, uh, I said, I've got to do something. And so I said, well, why don't I just combine the two issues that are, you know, closest to me and the most uh, pertinent and uh, try to go after both because they're almost the same thing, seeking justice, you know, when big crooks are trying to cover it up, whether that be government, whether it be utility or what have you. Also, I was thinking about Karen Gay Silkwood, um, you know, which, uh, uh, not, not Sharon Stone, but... Uh, uh, she's my favorite actress. I can't remember her name right now. Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep pr played Karen Silkwood. I think it was a movie that was made back in the 70s. Or it might have been 80s, but it was called Silkwood. Same difference except dealing with a utility that had a nuclear power plant. They killed her. They murdered her. And I'm thinking, you know, this is the same thing that PG&E has done to Jacqueline Grieg and her precious little 13-year-old daughter. Now this was in 2010, the case is pretty much over, I don't know what kind of investigation was, was launched, I don't know all of the particulars yet, the story is on Wikipedia, so I've got to do my study, and it's just all of this harassment and gang stalking crap has, uh, you know, kind of gotten my way, and I've had to rush to, you know, get things out in the public in case something happened to me, so that at least it'd be some kind of record of what happened to me, so I had to do that because... I can't advocate for anyone else if I'm not here anymore. So I kind of had to secure my own safety as much as I could before I launched on some of these other things, which will probably in the end get me killed. But I'm willing because bad people can't be allowed to get away with their evil deeds, and it's what I'm mandated to do by God. And it just gets under my skin. You look at that picture on my blog of Jacqueline's daughter, and you can't tell me that anyone who's a normal person is just not going to get hopping mad when they connect the dots. So, um, I just kind of thought it was kind of a sick irony, too, that here this woman is not only a ratepayer, but she's also on, Jacqueline Greek, she's also on a committee that regulates natural gas pipelines so it seems to me PG&E wanted to make a powerful statement. They blew up a, national ga a natural gas pipeline under her house to get rid of her. You know, that's almost like a sick joke. So uh, anyway, I've got no love loss for PG&E. I consider them to be Enron co-conspirators when uh, all of that stuff went down and we had the coldest cold snap in history in, here in California and my utility bills went up to $700 a month. I, I almost lost my place. But anyway, you know, I've had a thing for PG&E all along anyway, especially with the smart meters, especially with them spending $50 million for uh, a legis some legislation that uh, they wanted to get passed in California that lost, which uh, was some other thing that would have been against customers. You know, I've just had it with them. Anyway, I'm going to concentrate now more on Jacqueline Greig and her daughter Janessa Green that I believe were murdered by Pacific Gas and Electric in San Bruno, California on September 9, 2010. And that's what my focus is going to be pretty much on, you know, from now on. I'm setting the gang stuff and thinking to the side if they want to kill me or poison me or hit me with exotic weapons, you know, so be it. But uh, I'm pushing on until I can't anymore. And until my next video, hopefully I'll have some updates for you on that. Okay, take care. God bless and stay safe.